In this video, I just want to talk about the solace, something that we would normally do on the first day of class. I'm well aware you can all read. Um, I'm not trying to read it to you like a bedtime story. Instead, what it does is it provides you at least a little bit of context um, for why certain things are the way that they are and... Um, it also allows me to um, differentiate what's the policy in the syllabus versus how things generally will operate in this class, which I think is um, important as well. Okay, so let's start. Uh, first, I start out with telling you um, uh, my office location, email, and phone. Um, I am primarily... Um, this academic year. Um, I'm kind of split between this campus and the um, Maunoa campus. So I'm not in my office all the time. Um, the best way to really you know, reach me is email. Uh, you can call my phone and I do get like a notification that a, a voicemail was left, that kind of thing. So if you want to go old school and, and, and call, you can. If I'm in my office and the phone rings, I do answer it. I'm not like a phone avoider. Um, in all my years, um, I've not really been accused of being unreachable. So I don't plan to start doing that this semester. Um... And so, um, the best thing I can say is, um, you've got three ways to reach me. Email is probably the best. Um, then I would say phone and then last, dude, you can just show up at my office. If I'm here, that's great. If I'm not, well, um, you know, and you just stop by randomly. Well, I don't try again. Um, not really sure what else to say. <laughs> okay. Um, the biggest thing I can say, too, though, just uh, briefly um, about email. Um, look here, 1,582 emails are in my inbox right now. Um, what I would say about that is I'm, I don't manage a very well-organized um, inbox. And so there are emails that do get missed from time to time. I am not one to ignore people. So if you sent me something, it's important to you, and I didn't reply, send it again. I will not take any offense ever to you resending an email asking, hey, what's up, or saying, hey, I haven't heard from you. Um, you know, email gets sent to my phone. Um, I will see things that you send. Sometimes an email doesn't require a response from me, but certainly if the email needs a response from me and I haven't replied to you, seriously just send it again and again i will not take any offense to um the fact that i'm not, I'm not think that you're annoying me or or anything like that um if anything i'll just feel guilty that i didn't reply faster okay um so then we have our course description mm -hmm. Not a really great description. I mean, in in sense that it's not written well. Um, I instead decided to rewrite it uh, unofficially, and that would be what you see here. That basically this is the second of a two course sequence that many of you who are business majors, I know not all of you are, but many of you who are business majors are required to take these two courses, and this is the um, course that essentially focuses on. Um, the macro economy, the performance of the economy as a whole. Here are learning outcomes. The reason why these are important is I'm not one generally to map things out every time we do something to these learning outcomes. It's just that it's something I focus on at the end of the semester of did I do what I was supposed to do, um, what this course was designed to do. Um, if we fulfill these four objectives, I will feel that um, in one sense at least. Now, how will I assess you this semester? Um, I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try to add some quizzes in here. The reason why I'm going to try to do that is then it kind of reduces the weight a little bit on each of the exams. Um, that's something that, hey, hey, listen to this, 
that's something that was um, talked about at least a few times in my course evaluations goes to show I do look at them. I do take um, criticism well. Um, and this was something that individuals wanted, and I feel it's a way to um, uh, reduce the weight, at least on those three exams. I'm trying it out for the first time, so I'm sure there will be problems that emerge, but um, at least we have something we can try. Okay. Um, We will have homework assignments, graded homework assignments for most of the topics, and we will have analysis papers. In my account, we do have eight, so I don't think it's going to go as high as ten, but we do have eight um, analysis papers, at least at this point. The homeworks and the quizzes are designed to help you do better on the exam. That's really their point. For the textbook, um, we are using a free textbook, so there's nothing that you need um, to buy for this course. Um, uh, all that I've done is I've taken out the individual chapters and posted them on La Lima that you can then download. Um, so that exists um, for you. Um, it, it, it's a good textbook. Um, even though it's free, it is a good textbook. You can download the whole book here, or if you go on the, if you want to buy a print copy of the book, they're rather inexpensive. Um, I'm not sure if the bookstore really has copies anymore. I know at one time they did, but then they were kind of grumpy about holding a book that I'm sure doesn't generate as much income as other kinds of books. So. Um, if, if you're before you spend actual money send me a copy uh, a, a link of what you're going to proposing to buy so that I can make sure it's um, you're not wasting your money but to use copies are, are rather cheap these are the relevant important dates um, in terms of like dropping the course withdrawing the course this is um, yes these are the official dates but I am not an expert on what the registrar's policies are in terms of these kinds of things. So um, my suggestion to you would be that you, um, you know, that you, uh, my, my suggestion would be is that you um, go to the registrar's office and make sure, you know, if you're contemplating something for really for any course, not just mine, but really for any course, um, you should probably talk to someone in the registrar's office. Okay. Um, let's see. Classroom policies. So in terms of classroom policies, um, the official um, policy as is listed here is that essentially if you've got if you're doing something and it's late then um, you know you need to um, make sure that um, if you're submitting something late you should try to talk to me first because the default is that it will not um, it will receive a zero otherwise so um, I'm not the kind of person that is going to, um, I'm not the kind of person that's going to say, Hey Kai, I noticed you haven't been doing work the past month. What's going on, buddy? That's just not the way I am. Um, I pretty thoroughly believe that people get to, um, make their choices, um, you know, and that their choices are, you know, all adults at this point your your um, thoughts are you've made decisions about whether you're going to stay in the course or not and um, and what you're going to do and what your other responsibilities are you don't need me making that decision for you if something happens and you can't submit something on time tell me about it 
but tell me the truth. And, you know, um, we all have different things going on in our life. And I, I want to try to accommodate you as fairly as I can. So just tell me the truth if something is going on and you can't complete something on time. Okay. Um, learning challenges and accommodations. You would generally know if you have, um, if you need accommodations. And so if you need those accommodations, please um, reach out to um, the ADA 504 coordinator and then they tell me what I need to do to accommodate you. Uh, we do have the Noyal Center where there are tutors available for this course. So um, if you know that you need more intensive tutoring, um, the Noyal Center would be where you go. You can ask me as well for referrals to certain tutors and whatnot if you feel you need those. Um, the campus in terms of um, non-discrimination policies, um, you know, if you um, know of someone who's um, experiencing that type of discrimination or if you yourself are, um, there are individuals you can talk to on campus. Um, and probably the best person to start with would be the, um, the West Oahu Title IX coordinator whose email address is right here. Uh, there is a code of conduct that you must follow. Um, academic honesty, you know, in this course, um, you know, every instructor is different, but I do not treat, since it's an online asynchronous course, if you go on Google to look something up during a quiz, during an exam, during a homework, I don't think of that as cheating. That's my definition. I do not think of that as cheating. Um, I don't think of that as um, anything um, violating academic honesty. Now, you are writing analysis papers. Um, papers need to have citations. Um, papers need to be written by you, not by someone else. And you would think Shiding will never know. Eh, I've read enough stuff. I probably will know um, if you didn't, in fact, write it. And we got our grading scale. I do really try to grade things quite promptly. Um, and then we have our schedule. So, you know, it, it goes both ways, and and I'm I'm aware of that, and it's not. How do I say this? In in my course, when it's online asynchronous, I believe that um, because of the structure of this course, it works better to have fewer deadlines. That's just what I believe. Um, and about half of you in a tip, about half of the students in, a, in this class, or maybe even a little bit more, agree with that. There is another half of the students, though, that believe that um, time management is a skill that they do not have and that having fewer deadlines is bad because, you know, the deadline comes and they haven't done enough work and then they have to rush to complete it right at the last minute. I'm not dismissing that. I, I, I can absolutely see that happening. Unfortunately, I have to make a choice of which of these two things we're going to do, right? Keep in mind, one of the reasons why some individuals want to take an online asynchronous course is so that they have um, more flexibility with regard to their schedule. So that's why I decided doing that. So we have three deadlines here. September 18th, October 23rd, and November 27th. Those would be three rather important dates that a bulk of the assignments, well, actually all of the assignments, analysis papers, and quizzes would be due on that date for, you know, for part one and then part two and then part three on each of those dates. And then right after that deadline, there's then an exam that's available for um, a few days after that date 
we then have a kind of consolidated time to take each of the exams. Basically, this ensures that everyone completes the course on time. And so that's then what you see here. These are just suggestions that it should take you about a week to get through chapter one, about a week to get through chapter two, which is topic two, about two weeks to get through topic three, but maybe not really. Um, and so basically then by the middle of September, we are ready to, <coughs> um, all that all work would be submitted. And then the following week, you'd have this exam. And then we repeat the process. And something new I'm adding this semester as well um, is something called Applied Topics. These are not, they don't have um, graded homework associated with them or anything else, but they're just topics that I think students you might find some interest in that somewhat relate to um, the topics that we dealt with in that part. And then we do the same thing here in part three, which in, with another applied topic. And then we have the third exam, which is not comprehensive, it's just a third exam. Okay, that's in essence um, the syllabus for this course. If anything is unclear, really, truly, do reach out to me.